Hi, love bug. Welcome to the Naked Yoga Podcast. This podcast is all about incorporating bits and pieces of yogic philosophy and spirituality into your everyday life. I'm your host, Nico Foley, a graduate student at Columbia University's Spirituality Mind Body Institute. I'm also a yoga and meditation instructor at a little studio called Core Power Yoga. You may have heard of it. My mission here is to help you nourish your mind, body, and spirit connection. Each podcast episode will begin with a guided meditation, followed by the core of the episode pairing a spiritual concept with science. Lastly, each episode will end with a mindful closure, providing you with actionable steps you can do after listening to deepen your mind, body, and spirit connection. So without further ado, let's get right into today's episode. If you guys are aware of everything that's going on in real time at Columbia University, but it's been a little crazy. I haven't actually been on campus. There's been several things that I have been supposed to do on campus, but just haven't been able to simply because they literally shut the campus down. So I want to say on here, like (laughs) pro-Palestine. I honestly think we should just have a moment of silence for all of the Palestinians that are just suffering right now because of, honestly, America wanting to fund another war. So let's just have a moment of silence before we get into our meditation. Okay, welcome back. Um, If you need to take more moments, please take them. Otherwise, I kind of feel called to do this exercise called vagal breathing. And basically, it activates the vagal nerve in the brain that helps you to kind of tap into just some relaxation. So whenever you're ready, go ahead and SH all the air out. Shh. Big inhale and an exhale. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one, two, three, four. Hold. Inhale for one, two, three, four. Exhale for one two, three, four, hold, inhale for one, two, three, four, exhale for one, two, three, four, hold, inhale for one, two, three, four, exhale for one, two, three, four, Hold. Beautiful. Continue to breathe just like you. And just take a moment to notice how you're feeling now. Noticing if you feel any more relaxed or at ease or just in touch with yourself. And sometimes when you meditate, you don't feel anything at all, and that's okay too. If you want to take a moment to pause this podcast and journal and reflect on how that breathing exercise felt for you, you are more than welcome to do that here. Otherwise, let's just jump right into today's episode. So I'm really excited. This episode is going to be a continuation of last week's episode, The Power of Yoga on Mental Health. And one thing that I really, really want to talk to you guys about today is the power of community. So there's this term, and I believe it's sociology, that is the third place. And so 
reading this from Wikipedia, <laughs> not the most <laughs> scientific source, but honestly, collective consciousness, collective information is pretty reliable. So in sociology, the third place refers to social surroundings that are separate from the two usual social, social environments. The first place, which is your home, and the second place, which is your workplace. Examples of third places include churches, cafes, bars, clubs, community centers, public libraries, gyms, bookstores, etc., etc., etc. And I believe this is coined by a sociologist called Oldenburg. I am not a sociology major, so I don't know that much about sociology, but I do know a lot about yoga. And so the word yoga, actually, this is from Iyengar too, who is a, a really huge yogi. If you haven't read Light on Yoga, highly recommend. And I'm just going to read it verbatim as well. The word yoga is derived from the Sanskrit root yuk which means bind, join, attach, and yoke, to direct one's attention to, to use, on, apply, and, right, this is kind of like the most important part, it also means union or communion, so essentially the power of like yoga and community is unmatched for mental health, so in my paper I actually went directly into matrescence, which if you're not a maternity researcher like me, matrescence is essentially the word that describes like becoming a mother, similar to like adolescence and childhood, like a, a child becoming an adolescent and eventually a mature adult. Matrescence is kind of the same like cycle, social, physical, all of those changes that happens to women when they go from being women to mothers. <laughs> and so one thing that was really amazing when it came to birthing outcomes and honestly just like the experience of matrescence and becoming a mother was when women were doing these yoga communities, yoga classes rather, in community, up to 50% of the women cease antidepressant medications. Well, one, because pregnancy and antidepressants isn't the best <laughs> but they didn't have to continue it because the community they felt so supported in community while they're doing yoga that a lot of their need for these antidepressants kind of fell to the wayside and it's also very interesting just to think about how a yoga studio can kind of change your life I don't know if all of you guys are active yogis but I know one of the reasons why I am so, so sad to leave New York is because of the community that I have at my yoga studio. I just feel like so loved and held and protected there. And I think a lot of people feel that too. Um, I don't think it's, <laughs> it doesn't come to a surprise that, to me at least that once these women found community and yoga that they were able to kind of get off of a lot of their antidepressants. And antidepressants, like psychiat psychiatric medication, wasn't the only effect. Honestly, there was a separate study by Robert Shaw in which women who participated in group yoga classes had significantly reported like decrease in pain um, for labor and delivery, specifically when compared to their peers that did their yoga classes like at home, like via tape versus women who did the yoga classes in studio and community. So I do think there's a lot to be said about just like the power of community in our society that we're not really paying special attention to. I mean, even in New York, a place that's super liberal, we're seeing that our government, our local mayor, mayor actually is trying to defund our local libraries. Libraries are like a huge third place in the community, you know, like they have like English lessons at my library, guitar lessons at my library, like children can come and like librarians read them books on like a daily basis. Like libraries are such a huge pillar of the community. And if you're not a member of your local library, I highly recommend getting a library card because even just like having the card, even if you're not <laughs> going there often or like renting books or materials or anything, I believe that they 
honestly like count membership by the cards and like the more cards they have out like the more strategic I guess it is for them I don't even know how I got on this topic I'm rambling a little bit but yes third places are really important and I think that's why we're seeing like kind of like the mental health crisis that we're having because libraries in particular are a free nice third place I love my yoga studio so much but it does cost to be a member there and it's not the most affordable thing ever so it's really interesting to think about how we can find a way to leverage like what we know now from like the research and the studies and like kind of integrate them to make a better society because we're not really doing that (laughs) Um, I do think there was more research needed for the Robert Shaw study, his, um, like population, his N, I always, I'm like, what's a good word to say that's not N, but the number of participants that were in the study, it was 66 pregnant women. So it's pretty small. And I think we can replicate that with more people. I also, sorry, I'm skipping some of the studies because some of them are like, not as relevant as others, but there's one in particular that was done in Asia, and I want to see if I can find it now. Okay, I found it. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. So there was this really cool study that was done in, oh, it was Asia, but I can't remember. I didn't write down exactly where it was in Asia, but essentially it was looking at the influence of yoga on women women that have PTSD and all these women had been in a car accident and what they found was so interesting so they had 94 women they split them into two groups one group received the yoga intervention and then the other group instead of like doing yoga at home in isolation or like whatever (laughs) they actually decided to put the other 47 women in a control group that still met on a weekly basis but instead of doing yoga they actually just met and played board games and like hung out and we found that well not me I wasn't a part of the study (laughs) but I read about it and what they found was that in both groups like the the yoga group and the control group there was a significant decrease in psychological distress so anxiety and depression following their car accident so what this study ooh, it's 11 11 what this study shows is that there's a huge emphasis on just the communal aspect that one is also increasing you know the mental health benefits of yoga but also too like even if you're not doing yoga even if you're just meeting in community and playing board games there's still some serious mental health benefits that can be reaped from that so it's like you don't always have to do like the most on the mat sometimes it's just being in community off the mat as well that really helps like just people have better mental health outcomes and it's so sad too because I feel like in our society it's like everything costs money you know like I wish there was a place like I guess maybe a park or something now that the weather's nice where people can meet on like a weekly basis and just hang out and have fun but I think I don't know just the way I grew up or the society that we're in I feel like hanging out always equates to like going to a bar or like a club or having dinner or going to the movies or like just something that isn't like free so to speak I mean even when we go to the park I feel like we're always like okay like let's get like some beers or like some snacks or like nothing is just like there to be so I think that's something that we can definitely consider as we kind of move into alignment and to awareness like how can you facilitate and foster community where you are because yes the point and the moral of the story is that yoga is like super beneficial for your mental health but I also think that this PTSD study tells us it's not just about the yoga it's also very much about the community and so how can you foster your own community wherever you are right now I think thanks to technology I mean technology is amazing you guys are listening to me from wherever you are rambling about yoga and like trying to like help you help you help me help us (laughs) 
(laughs) But I'm not there with you right now in community. You know what I mean? Like, I think technology is really great at helping us facilitate these, like, false feelings of community like with Instagram and YouTube and like I love all these things but my friends on Instagram are not my friends in real life and I think there is something that is just so special and so needed about just meeting up in person and like being in community one of the things that I love the most that I've been doing lately is just like joining like my local community choir and like taking piano lessons and joining like a rec like volleyball league with like a couple of friends and like ending up getting paired with a bunch of random people that are now also my really good friends so I think there's a there's a lot of ways to foster community where you're at and I'm preaching to the choir because I feel like you guys if you're listening to this podcast you probably already know but I do want to just place an emphasis on how important it is to have community where you are and not just you know on the phone or through like a a screen because a lot of things can kind of be hidden and and mediated through the screen and I don't know it's just a lot of things you just need sometimes you just need a hug you know and you can't get a hug when you're facetiming someone who lives on the opposite side of the country or just like not in the same city as you so i think today is going to be a short and sweet episode because speaking of community my friend wants me to meet him for lunch at his office so (laughs) i am going to log off love you and leave you here ah thank you guys so much for watching and or listening and i will talk to you later love you bye Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Naked Yoga Podcast. My name is Nika, and if you want more content from me, you can follow me on Instagram or subscribe to my YouTube channel at Nourish Nika. This is a completely independent podcast. Yes, I write the scripts, record, and edit the podcast all by myself. Therefore, any support you could give, like a like, a share, a comment, maybe leaving a little review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you might be listening would go a very long way and warm my little itty bitty heart. Thank you so much once again for listening, my love bug. I will see you in the next episode.